In this next tutorial I'm going to look at the next stage of the setup process for Premiere Pro and that is creating a sequence to edit into. Once you've set up a new project and imported your media into that project and done some organisation of that media, you can't actually do any editing until you create a sequence within the timeline window here to edit into. The timeline window itself is where you do the bulk of the actual structural side of an edit. So you put clips down into an order, create a sequence of clips, reorder them, trim them, add effects, add transitions, add graphics. It's all done in this timeline area here. But the timeline itself initially is empty. And before we can actually do any editing, we have to populate it with what is known as a sequence. A sequence gives you a set of video and audio tracks that you can then edit your video and audio into on the timeline. So when you set up a sequence, the sequence itself has to have some parameters. And these parameters relate to video settings. If we just have a look at a clip for a minute, I select a clip in my project window and just do a right click on it. I'm going to choose properties. It gives me some basic information about the clip. So where it's saved to, what type of video file it is, so what type of compression it has on it, its file size, it's frame size, which is known as image size in here, so in pixels across and down how many pixels there are. And the frame rate of the video, so this is the amount of frames per second that the video runs at. There's also a bit of audio information here, telling me the audio bandwidth uh, of the uh, audio side of the video file. And another key bit of information here, as well as duration, is pixel aspect ratio. So this is telling me that this video clip has square pixels, so it has an aspect ratio of 1.0 to 1, i.e. square. Not all video clips, incidentally, use square pixels. A lot of the older standard definition video clips used non-square pixels. And there are a few HD video formats that also use non-square pixels, although it's fairly uncommon. When you're setting up a sequence, in most instances, what you try and do is match the settings of your video clips as closely as possible. So there is no unnecessary conversion of the video clips on the timeline when you're editing. What happens is once you create a sequence and you drop clips onto it, the clips play back at the sequence settings. So if those are radically different to your video clips, that potentially will change the video clips themselves. So a very quick example, the frame rate. My video clips here, for example, are 25 frames per second. I could set up a sequence for 30 frames a second. Uh, and in that instance, suddenly it will try and convert the clips and play them back with an extra five frames per second that it essentially has to make up itself. Now, if I don't need it to do that, I don't want it to do that. I want to keep the clips as close to their original settings as possible. There are exceptions to this though. And one exception might be, for example, that you are doing an edit for social media where you might want, say, square video for Twitter or vertical video for Instagram. And in fact, I have another tutorial on the whole setup and workflow for uh, vertical video. If that is something that you're interested in, please have a look at that and that will go through the relevant settings. But let's say, for example, I wanted to set up a sequence with square video. I'm not going to actually have any video clips usually that have a, a frame size that is square. And because my output would want to be square, I would, however, want to edit my standard clips on a square sequence so that I can see what they look like within the square window, scale them, move them, make sure I'm seeing the best bit of each clip visually within the area that is visible. So sometimes you set your sequence up based on what the output wants to be. Most of the time, though, you're setting it up to make sure that you don't degrade your video content in any way within the editing process itself. There's two main ways of setting up a sequence. The first one, and probably the quickest and easiest one, uh, where you want to match your sequence to your actual footage, is to select a clip and tell Premiere to create a sequence based on the settings of that clip. And this is really easy to do, and there's a couple of ways of doing this. If the sequence that you're going to create is the first sequence within your project, you will have an empty timeline window like we have here. And what I can do is I can take an existing clip, drag it across into the timeline area here. And as it says, drop media here to create sequence. When I let go, it does a couple of things. The first thing that it does is it sets up a new sequence with video and audio tracks on it, as you can see here. 
it also places the clip that I drop onto that sequence onto the video one and audio one tracks of that sequence. It creates in the project a new item. So every time you create a new sequence within Premiere, you get a small icon here appear within your project window that represents that sequence. You can actually have an unlimited number of sequences within Premiere, and there's lots of reasons for doing this. One reason might be that you're doing slightly different versions of an edit, maybe a longer version and a shorter version. You're gonna be using all the same footage, but the actual edits themselves will be different, in which case you'd have one project with all your footage in, but two sequences, one for the longer edit, one for the shorter edit. Or uh, another common example is it might be that you get to a certain point within an edit where you think you wanna try a few things out, you're not sure if they're gonna work, you don't potentially want to have to do loads of undos to get things back to how they were if it doesn't work. So what you can do is duplicate an existing sequence within the project, work on the copy. If it all goes wrong, you've got the original sequence still there to go back to. With this in mind, and the fact that it creates a new icon here for each sequence, it's a very good idea to rename the sequences as you go along. When you create a sequence from a clip, as you can see, it's taken on the same name as the clip itself. And that's also shown here on the timeline window. That's the sequence name up there as well. And when you have multiple sequences open, as you will see in a minute, you have more than one tab along here. So naming the sequences so you can actually see which sequence you're editing into is, is really important. To rename a sequence, it's fairly straightforward. You just go back down into the project window where the sequence icon has been saved to, click in the name part of it and give it a name. Something relevant to the edit that you're gonna be doing on that sequence. As soon as I click away from here now, as you can see, it updates on the timeline as well. As you also might have noticed here, it puts the icon for the sequence in the same bin as the clip that it was created from. So from an organizational standpoint, I usually get the sequence out of that bin and put it in a new bin called sequences. So I'm just gonna close up my media bin here, do a right click in the project window, choose the new bin option, call it sequences, and then open that back up again and I'm just gonna drag the sequence icon into the sequences bin. It just means if I'm using multiple sequences, I know where they all are, I can open them up easily and obviously I've named them so I know which is which. So that's the first way of creating a sequence and as I say, the key to that is that the settings of the sequence take on the settings of the clip. So the frame rate of the sequence would match the frame rate of the clip, in this case 25 frames per second. There's the frame rate listed here for the clips themselves and you can see it's the same. The other big one here would be the frame size of the clip. If I scroll along in the project window, you can see there's the frame size of my clip, 1920 by 1080, that is 1080 HD frame size. And this little 1.0 is the pixel aspect ratio, so square pixels, and you can see it's taken on those settings as well. It's also taken on the settings of the audio of the clip, so 48 kilohertz stereo 16-bit audio. And those are the main settings that you wanna make sure that you get right. There are actually a couple of other settings that get created when you create a sequence. I'm gonna look at those in a moment. If, for any reason, you've already created a sequence, obviously in the timeline window here, it's not empty anymore, it's populated by the sequence itself. Um, what if you want to create a new sequence based on another clip? Well, obviously I can't just drag into the timeline window now because if I do so, it's just gonna add the new clip to the existing sequence. So for future sequences where you wanna create them based on clips, all you do is go back to the clip you wanna base the new sequence on. This time do a right click on it from the menu that appears. Choose new sequence from clip. That has exactly the same as effects as the first method that I showed you, creates a new sequence, drops the clip onto the sequence, names the sequence based on the clip, takes on all the settings of the clip to create the sequence with. You can see there it is in here. I'm just gonna rename it, let's call it edit two, and I would then put that in my sequences bin. As you can see on the timeline, we've now got two tabs. There's interview edit one, there's edit two. There's the two icons representing those two sequences. If I do at any point want to shut a sequence down from my timeline, I just click on the little X button here, that closes it. If I want to open it back up again, I just go to the icon here and double click, and that would open that sequence back up again. That's all good where one, all of your clips are the same format, and two, where you want your sequence settings to match the clip settings as closely as possible but there are other circumstances where that might not be the case.